Okay, so here's we're going back to our checklist now. The next thing on the checklist after the birth certificates are all current and previous marriage certificates and divorce decrees with translation if necessary. So with the marriage certificate for a fiancé visa, right, um, most of the time that's not required because obviously you're not married when you are getting into a fiancé visa relationship. Uh, one of the elements you have to prove is that you are free to marry, which means you cannot currently be married. However, there are certain circumstances where in our office we will have people who have had multiple marriages, multiple divorces, and we'll, we ask for all the previous marriage certificates um, just to have them in the office and have them available to us in case a question comes up about a previous marriage. So, um, but certainly it's not going to be normal for you to have to bring your marriage certificate up, right? Most of the time we're looking for the divorce decree, right? The divorce decree is going to show that you have been ruled by a court of law to actually be available to marry now, to move forward with the fiancé relationship and get the fiancé visa. So we have a sample marriage, uh, cancel, divorce decree here, and this one is for our petitioner in this case, Timothy Randall Parker, and his ex-wife, Sarah Susan Shipman Parker, and here's their final decree of divorce. Now, how do we know what it, what is really required of a divorce, like what it's supposed to look like? Well, remember in the National Visa Center here, National Visa Center, we have documents the applicant must submit to the NVC. This is a part of the website where it talks about the required documents, again, some of these checklists that are showing up everywhere, and one of them is a marriage termination document. So who needs to submit marriage termination documentation? If you were previously married, you must obtain evidence of the termination of each prior marriage. Evidence must be in the form of original documents issued by an official authority or certified copies bearing the appropriate seal or stamp of the issuing authority, such as final decree, divorce decree, a death certificate, or annulment papers. So this is what they're talking about. So for this reason then, we have ours here, which is a final decree of divorce, <clears throat> and that's mostly what we're going to be seeing here. So it, this decree of divorce then, what it means is that a judge has actually listened to the husband, listened to the wife, heard the evidence, and has decided on this day, you are no longer married and you are legally free to marry someone else. That decree is like a speaking. It's a statement of the, the, the case and the ruling on that case. So it's important then for a decree of divorce that you actually have the judge's signature on it. So this one does have the judge's signature. It has a statement of all the different elements that have happened in the case and um, says that each person is going to be free to do their own thing and here is the actual signature from the judge and a lawyer has approved for entry over here and here's the date April 25th 2011 so this marriage certificate then is, I mean this cancel this divorce decree then is a good divorce decree and so uh, sometimes <clears throat> you might see divorce paperwork because when you get divorced, you get a big pile of paperwork. There's all these different papers getting filed into the court. And if you're not sure about the divorce decree, if what you have is actually the divorce decree, then you're going to want to go to the court where you receive your divorce and request a certified copy of the divorce decree, the final judgment, the final decree of divorce, and just see what they give you. You know, they'll give you something, it'll be stamped, and then make sure the judge's signature's on it, and that way you'll know that you actually have the right document to move forward. Mm -hmm.